Ubuntu for me is a state of being. It's who we are in community as opposed to who we are as individuals. Simple question, very complicated answer. Uh, it is a combination of all the humanness that we can muster, that we can pull together. Every ounce of humanness that we have thrown into one pot, mixed up and dished out to everybody. That's probably the best description that I can come up with. It brings in a sense of connection to all that is, to the people we live with, the earth, the wild ones, all processes of nature. Only good and positive things, only good and positive emotions, only good and positive um, feelings of sharing and becoming one with the rest of humanity. That's how I would probably describe Ubuntu. It's a, a deep connection to, to all life and the people that we're living with. If you can imagine the whole world living in harmony, everyone loving each other, united, no one in conflict with anyone else because they don't need to be, because they have everything they need and they live beautiful lives on a planet of abundance, that's how it, I would define Ubuntu. My name is Louise Clark and I am holding the fort here at the Stone Circle Ubuntu Village. I'm Michael's partner in Ubuntu and in life. We've been together almost four years now and we came together because of a similar vision for the world, a similar goal uh, for a united future, for, for, for where people come together. And uh, it's been a beautiful unfolding of our united vision for the world. Though we're coming from different places, Michael and I share a vision of a common united humanity and Michael's built the framework in his book Ubuntu Contributionism and I hold the, the community aspect of that. I anchor the village, the community projects and so it works really well together because he holds the, the framework of Ubuntu and I weave the strands and bring the people together. Everything you can imagine for the benefit of our planet is part of the philosophy of Ubuntu because, well, I gave it the word contributionism and within the, the word contributionism probably describes it uh, more eloquently in, more, in modern times because it means that everybody contributes whatever their God-given talents or their acquired skills are for the greater benefit of everyone in their smaller community, the larger community and the global community. So that means that no one will do anything to harm planet Earth because without planet Earth we're not going to exist here. doesn't mean that we're going back to the dark ages. It means that we're reconnecting to our natural state of being. Um, I was researching the origins of humankind and um, writing a book about it, uh, Slave Species of God, and I realized in my research that there's a very murky area in human history where money suddenly makes its appearance. And uh, I realized that money has not been part of human humanity or human evolution forever that there was a specific time in human history that we suddenly see money um, appearing and taking control of the human race and I realize at that moment that people don't need money humanity does not need money and that money is actually the primary tool of enslavement of the human race it's a long process and that starts with recognizing where we are in our society today we have to take a good look and be aware and recognize the problems in our society before we can start imagining solutions. The moment I started imagining what a world without money would look like, I realized that all the evils, all the dark areas of humanity, all the suffering, all the misery, all the anger, all the crime, everything just virtually evaporates instantly as soon as you remove money or the tool of enslavement. When people no longer live for, for, their, uh, for their own selves, for the greed, what's in it for me, how can I make as much money so I can survive? When you start worrying about what can I do so that we can all live beautifully and, and how can I contribute with my talents? That's how I started 
de developing the philosophy of contributionism. At that stage, I called it contributionism, not Ubuntu. And only later I realized that Ubuntu, the ancient African philosophy, is actually exactly the same thing. And therefore now it's Ubuntu contributionism. At the Stone Circle Ubuntu Village, we've only just begun. We're right at the very beginning. We've just had, around seven weeks ago, six and now we have seven volunteers join us from all over the world. So we really have a beautiful global community here. And we've been working for the last month and a bit just securing our space, just providing accommodation for volunteers to join us and really creating the foundation for what we want to take forward in the next in, in the months to come. Just securing the base, making making sure that we're secure as the as the home of Ubuntu, so that we can help others. If we can't help ourselves, how can we possibly go out and think we can help other people and help our community? So that is very important, crucial step, and um, and starting to learn how and what we should be implementing first, and and at what pace do we implement things. You can't just bulldoze your way in there and say, well, we're going to you know, create a vegetable garden for everybody. Well, how's it going to work? One of the, the three areas that we identified we want to introduce as the first community projects here are the vegetable garden, which has been running now for over six years and is a complete disaster because there's no real understanding of what it is we have to do. You can't just plant a bunch of vegetables and think now you're going to solve the, the food problem. That's not how Ubuntu or, or contributionism works. Uh, so we need to re-educate people what it is we're actually trying to do there and how are we going to make the vegetable garden benefit the entire community, not just a bunch of people that might take a few vegetables home with them. That's not what this is about. In Africa there's a proverb that says it takes a community to raise a child. And I'm really excited about implementing our philosophy for the education of our children. I've taken my children out of school and so they really are going to be the first to experience the vision of how we want to, to prepare them for life. And it's, though we, we are only at the beginning of, of setting this up, we do know that it's important for our children to, to have life skills, you know, to learn the life arts. That is core to our education philosophy. So, in other words, the healing arts, how to cook, art, music, science, geography, where they are in the world, the cultures around the world, you know, things that connect them to the earth and one another so that they can be confident when they're 16 or 18 years old that they know how to lead a beautiful life for themselves. For me, the big one is the fish farm. Fish farm has been standing empty and deserted for um, probably about eight years now as well and just it's we can breed a million fish a year there we can provide fish and food for the entire community and create abundance by bringing in an income for the community from selling the excess fish um, and by that bringing in a necessary short-term finance to create more community projects and that's really the very simple philosophy you create more than what you need you use what you need and the rest you sell off to outside communities at a fraction of the rate that they can get the stuff from their own communities and very quickly you'll create a, a, a strong attraction in the whole area where people start coming to your community to, to get their bread, their milk, their butter, their cheese, their fish, their vegetables because they get it cheaper than anywhere else. And that really is the fundamental uh, philosophy of contributionism. 
we don't want our children to grow up as marching soldiers to the beat of a drum that is destroying the planet and and the people. You know, we want them to be connected to who they are and their roles within the community. The other one is um, the the rubbish dump. The rubbish dump, which is just unbelievable. They're like dumping all the rubbish, plastic, everything you can imagine, on a beautiful mountain, creating a landfill there, not very successfully. So we need to start recycling. Everything that the stand produces needs to be recycled and and destroyed and recycled and uh, for the benefit of the people. So the rubbish dump presents us with a very interesting opportunity to use the money from recycling to buy food so we can create a community kitchen so we can feed the orphans and there are a lot of orphans in this town in every African town there are lots of orphans orphans, the homeless, the single mothers the aged and provide one good meal a day for these people from the money that we make from the recycling dump it's a very simple formula it does, doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out but again to get there just to get the municipality to talk to us and agree that we can do this is a huge problem and we see very very clearly that the servants of the people are not serving the people I've been really surprised at how things have come together so easily and I think that it's because the people that have come here are of like mind. We all share the same philosophy. So regardless of whether we're from Holland or Denmark or the UK, Australia, we all share the vision of a common humanity. And things are going really well. We are moving together forward at a rapid rate because it seems when, when you bring a, a large group of people together, it just expands the potential and that is what has been the gift I think of bringing people together at the village. The reason why this is the the heart of the ancient civilizations is because we're right in the middle of thousands and thousands of ancient stone ruins, the stone circles as we've started to call them and then also Adam's calendar which is about 45 minute drive down the road into the Lofeld. So Waterfall Burfen is really right in the middle of it. And uh, you know, even in modern history, it's got an interesting history with Paul Kruger and the, and the South African war and the gold and, uh, and the modern gold mining and the, the disappearance of Paul Kruger's golden train that carried all the gold and going back thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of years of gold mining on planet Earth. So we're right in the middle of this vast vanished civilization there was mining gold left behind more than 10 million stone ruins uh, and we're right in the middle of it. So if this is not the place to put Ubuntu, then I don't think we'll find a more suitable place to start or restart civilization on planet Earth. I have a sense of Ubuntu within me and I think we all do. But to, to really say with any conviction as to how Ubuntu, what Ubuntu is going to look like years down the line is unrealistic because in terms of Ubuntu it really depends on the people involved, the spirit and energy of who is building this community and the society and I think it's exciting to, to put out an intention but to, to let it unfold as it should, as we grow as a human species and consciousness, as we grow and come together in community, I think it's going to be beautiful. Ubuntu is undefined, but it's real in the hearts of all people everywhere. My message to everyone is the only way we can free ourselves from this financial and economic enslavement is to stop using the money. The world is really growing in consciousness. People are waking up all the time and once we all hold this vision of Ubuntu in our minds and hearts, that is when it expands and that is when it unfolds to become something we probably can't even imagine today.